What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today on the channel, we're going to change some back brake pads on the Mercedes. Uh, if you own a W205 or a night, uh, two, I was about to say 19 something, uh, a 2015 to uh, the current uh, Mercedes C300. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do the brake pads today. Uh, I'm going to get the Corvette pulled outside, get the Mercedes inside, and uh, well, you guys stay tuned. All right guys, so we're here on the passenger side of the car. Uh, what we're gonna do is go ahead and take the tire off. This is the side that the, uh, the brake pad wear sensor is on, uh, both the passenger rear and the passenger front. So this is a good side to start on. Um, I don't like the design on this parking brake because as soon as you put the vehicle in park and open the door, um, it will put the parking brake on in the back. So. What happens a lot of the times is uh, you have you, you come back from a long trip or you're on the highway, you're going to slow down, now you have hot brakes, you put the car in park, open the door, and it sandwiches those brake pads nice and tight on the, uh, on the uh, <clears throat> brake rotor and they're nice and hot. And what happens a lot of times is you have that delamination that happens. So you'll go through about four sets of rear brake pads before you'll go through a set of front brake pads. I don't really like that. I think it's a stupid design. I think that it, something could be better, but you're running performance brakes and you know, what gives? I mean, the brake pads I'm about to change are $85 for a set. They come with the sensors and everything. So a little bit to be desired when it comes to that price point. If you're going through a $30 brake pad set, you know, I probably wouldn't complain, but you know, 90 bucks, if you had the dealership do it, it costs you a lot more. So uh, that's why I like to do things myself. So let's go ahead and jack this thing up. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take the lug nuts off. If you didn't notice already, I loosened the lug nuts before I took the contact patch off the ground. So it allows me to put that torque on there get these off. Now I like to use the nylon protected uh, lug nut sockets um, on these nice wheels, these AMG aluminum wheels. I also like to do things by hand uh, because it keeps you from da damaging stuff. Um, if I just zap this off here with an impact, um, yeah I might do that on Honda or Acura or maybe on my truck, but uh, not on this. So I, I prefer to do it by hand. Um, you get a better feel for it. You don't uh, cross thread a lug nut or something stupid like that. Um, I've seen worse stuff happen. So take these wheel fasteners off really quick here and uh, we'll get in here with the light and we'll look at these brake pads. All right guys, so number one thing when anytime you're jacking up the car, um, it's very important for a cribbage or you to put something underneath the, underneath the suspension. I put a, uh, a six by six right underneath the uh, suspension on the rear, uh, just so if the jack gives out, um, you know you have a safety uh, aspect there to hold the car up. So uh, the car sits a little bit too low for any jack stand that I have. It's just, I would have to jack it up crazy high in order to get a jack stand underneath it. So I just put a six by six underneath here and um, you know keeps you safe. So, all right, let's take off the brake caliper now. Uh, we're gonna take off the caliper, slide it out of the bracket, and I'll show you the brake pads. All right, guys, so first things first, when you get inside the car, you're gonna wanna put the ignition in the first position. All right, then we're gonna hit the call button here and K at the same time. So here on the steering wheel, I'm gonna attempt to hold the, hold the camera and do this at the exact same time. K and call, I'm holding holding. All right, now my workshop menu comes up. Now we're going to scroll down to brake pad replace. 
All right, conditions not fulfilled. If you get this message, this is because you need to take the parking brake off. So we'll go ahead and take the parking brake off. All right, you'll hear it disengage. We'll hit retry. Okay, now move to fitting position with OK. So hit OK, moving to fitting position. So you'll hear them working in the back here. Um, all right, so you heard it in the back. Um, it's It definitely did a lot of moving. So now we can go ahead and go, replace our brake pads, and then we'll come back in and uh, put it back on. So, All right, guys, I'm going to try to give you the best aspect here um, while doing this, but uh, keep in mind I'm trying to work around the camera. So here on your uh bracket uh, bolt that bolts the caliper into the bracket um, you have a little um, a little dust cap you take this dust cap off the end of this rubber boot here that uh, keeps your um, keeps your bolt protected so if my memory serves me correct it's an eight millimeter uh, allen we're about to find out here <clears throat> see if I can get in here to it nope guess it's not an eight Maybe it's a seven. Aha, seven, okay. So seven millimeter Allen uh, bolt in there. We're gonna go ahead and crack it loose with the ratchet here. And you'll be able to see the bolt move when you crack it loose, all right? So piece of cake, we're gonna go ahead and run it the rest of the way out here. Right now we're going to go on down to the bottom here. All right, same deal. I took off my dust cap. Now we're going to go ahead and get this thing broken loose here. Okay, so first step of taking the uh, brake caliper out of the bracket is you need to pry out these uh, these tabs here that hold it in place. So little spring-loaded tabs. Go ahead and pry them out of sp out of their space here. Come on. Um, I usually take a pry bar here and uh, pry it out of place. Um, just as uh, any other brake caliper, um, you know, pries right out of, out of place. Now you want to be careful with your, uh, you want to be careful with your wires, everything like that. Um, go ahead and pop the brake pads out of, out of the spots here. Um, I usually... <clears throat> Okay, so one thing you want to do is disconnect the uh, disconnect the uh, little uh, plug that has your uh, brake pad wear sensor in it here. Um, I always forget how to do this. I always forget. Okay, take this bad boy out. Okay, it should pop out of here. Okay, so literally just take this little 
this little uh, pin out here. Try to get you a little closer here. There's a little pin here um, or a little wire that holds on here. Um, just pop that out of the, its little slot. It holds your pad sensor in here. So, um, of course, it would behoove you to take this out first, but you know, I'm no pro, um, make mistakes all the time. So you only need to worry about it on this side of the car. So that's how it goes. All right, guys. So, uh, I'm sure you know me by now on the channel. If you don't, um, I never claim to be a pro. I've done this twice or uh, once before. Um, so by no means am I a pro. I'm going to make some mistakes. I'm not a tech that works on this all the time, but the brake pad set here, um, you can see on this brake pad set that there's a little hole in one of these brake pads. So that is your inner brake pad that has your sensor in it. So what we're gonna do is, these are the brand new pads here. Uh, what I'm going to do is take the sensor out of the bag. Uh, this kit comes with two sensors. My car only has a sensor on one side of the car. Um, all this is is a little, um, basically a little loop of wire. So I've done another video on this to check these. If you want to shoot them with a meter, um, you can shoot the, you know, uh, the terminals here and see if this is good or bad. So what happens is when your, when your brake pad wears down, um, this little sensor sticks into the brake pad. When it wears down past it, it basically wears this away, doesn't complete the circuit or it, it makes the circuit open and then it trips your light. So what you wanna do is you wanna put this brake pad wear sensor down in here. Now, it has these th this brass clip on it all the way around here, and what it does is it grounds it to the brake pad here. So what you wanna do is you wanna slide it in the hole. See if I can get good light on that. Let's see if I can bring this light over here. Okay, so I have the hole here. Okay, now I'm gonna put the brake pad sensor down in the hole and also down in the grooves here on the pad. Okay, now let's wiggle it into, spot, into its space here. And then once you get it lined up, then you just go ahead and pop it into, into its spot. So once it's seated all the way, it'll look like this. Whoa, all right, look like this once it's all the way down in there. So too easy, just like that. Now what we'll do is we'll set this back down in the caliper bracket. I am usually really careful with these wires because I don't wanna break a sensor that I'm just putting in the car. So um, basically it goes like this and this sensor will go out of the caliper. So let's spin the camera back around. I'll do my best to try to put this on um, without looking like a total rook. All right, next step in the process is we have to get our piston uh, seated in further to accept our wider brake pads in the back. So you can use a traditional kit like this. Uh, this is a Harbor Freight Pittsburgh uh, rear caliper set. Um, I prefer to use the Sir Tools uh, pneumatic operated one. Um, I've already set up my die, so your die will go in here and it will click into basically these little um, these little U-shaped um, valleys here in this, and literally these spin while um, they get set back into place. So I'm going to set the camera down. I'll show you exactly how it goes. <clears throat> All right, so these did not need to be uh, these did not need to be spun to get put back into place. It went straight in. Um, I was unable to turn it. So uh, usually, when you're using something like this, it'll have a draw bar on the end to allow you to turn. Um, so this one did not need turned. I don't remember that from last time. I thought I had to turn it, but uh, just so you know, um, once you have it in fitment mode. Uh, it'll allow you to push the piston the rest of the way in. So I went ahead and pushed it flush to the rubber part here. Um, got it pretty much flush in here. 
and we're about to put the brake pads back on. So let's do that now. So first things first, I'll just hold the, the brake caliper out of the way. You can see how I pushed it flush with the rest of the rubber. Now we're gonna go ahead and fit our inner brake pad here. It just hangs up in the bracket. All right, these make sure you have your little springs on here. These keep the uh, brake pad tight against the seating sp uh, spot once you get it in here. Now the outer brake pad will hang here in this as well. So now we're gonna go ahead and feed our sensor cord up through the brake caliper as we fit the brake caliper back on and into place. Patience goes a long way. You don't want to manhandle it, but it also um, takes a little bit of finesse to get it to where you want it to go. So get it back into its spot. All right, so now we've got it pretty much back to where it was. I'm gonna go ahead and run our bolts back in, change camera angles here around to the side. We'll run our bolt back in to where they need to be. We'll get our sensor back in and then we'll get us back out of fitment mode. Okay. All right, now that I got them run down in, I go back with a standard ratchet and make sure they're tight. Good. Okay, nice and tight. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and fit our Get our light back up in here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put our brake pad sensor back up into, into its spot here and click it into our little connector here. Now comes the time when we put our wire back along here and then click it back down into its spot here. Usually use a screwdriver and click it back down into its space. Now, I bent it a little bit, taking it out. So that's a little fault on me, but you know what? We'll just take it out here and we will bend it back the right way. Come on. Okay, see how I bent it apart? So I have to bend it back together here. Bend it back straight. And then it will slide back in on both sides. We'll get her back together here. Man, I'm sure a tech would make this look absolutely like mind-bogglingly fast. And I'm over here struggling with it because I do it like once every couple years. Here we go. Back down into its spot. Boom. Don't say I never did anything. All right. We'll come back over here on the front and put this bracket back on here. Now, from what I remember, this one is a pain in the butt. Um, I forget how I got it in here last time. Kind of just like this. <clears throat> just like that. Okay, cool. <laughs> that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. All right, so we've torqued our, our, uh, our Allen bolts on both sides. I'm going to put my dust cap back on here. We've hooked up our brake pad wear sensor. Brake pads have been replaced. Now, let's go back in the car. Somewhere I lost my gloves and decided I wasn't going to wear them anymore, so 
I'll wash my hands. We'll get back in the car and we're gonna go ahead and put them, uh, take it out of fitment mode, put the tire back on. All right guys, so we are back in the car. It says fitting position reached, exit fitting position with okay. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. Caution, exiting fitting position. And it's basically cinching the brake pads nice and tight. Back to where they should be. All right, fitting position has been exited, uh, exited confirm with okay. Boom, that is the whole gist of it. So now you know how to replace the brake pads. All right. All right, guys, so that wraps up the video on the rear brake pad replacement on the W205 C300. Um, I hope you guys learned something today, um, how to take it or put it into fitment mode, take it out of fitment mode, um, pushing the caliper back in, uh, fitting the new brake pads, um, how to put the sensor back together. Once again, if you're looking for the video on, uh, why did my camera do that? Uh, if you're looking for the video on how to shoot the brake pad wear sensor to see if it's good or not, I will link that in the description below so that you guys know um, exactly how I did that. But I'm going to go ahead and put the tire back on. We're going to torque the wheel fasteners to 100 Newton meters, and we're going to put it back down on the ground, and we're out of here. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're into, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.